Hey, 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 yeah. Yeah. They have Benicia secret for two years on conspiracy. Like, bruh, these folks telling on everybody right now, dog. On dead, bruh. Right. Like, on blood about 30. I know for a fact 30 people just got locked up, bruh. I ain't on the police shit no more. I ain't got nobody to roll on. I got to sit in a chokehold. <laughs> this handsome gentleman gave up a career in male modeling to make Mobile, Alabama a dope hub for the Deep South and is also a prime suspect in the hit. Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents last year. It's five months after the horrific killing of an elderly couple in Mobile's Happy Hill community, Mobile police have yet to make an arrest. The investigation has centered on a reputed drug kingpin, officially now a person of interest in these homicides. Now, all jokes aside, Honeycomb Brazy himself re referred to uh, Darren Southall, a.k.a. Dee Dee, as having put bricks on his head and called him the biggest snitch in the city on an IG post, and uh, this the police kind of uh, referenced that as well. Now, Dee Dee Southall has been making the news in South Alabama for a while. Here's a news story from 2012. Quote, police are searching for Darren Southall and expect to charge him with attempted murder in a shooting that occurred this morning at Cozy Brown's Kitchen on St. Stephen's Road, Chief Jimmy Gardner said during a news conference. Chief of Police said that Southall, who was 33 years old at the time, and a girl were sitting at a table in a restaurant when a second guy came in, saw the couple, and started beating on uh, Darren Southall right in the restaurant. Southall fired, uh, followed him outside and shot him. He didn't kill him, though. Now, D.D. Southall went to federal prison at some point after this. I don't know if it was for that shooting, which sounds like a state crime, unless they gave him federal felon in possession of a firearm. But either way, he was out by 2015. By 2016, the feds alleged he was rocking and rolling with the narcos from south of the border. Maybe someone he met in prison. And just as D.D. was building up his bankroll and war chest, Honeycomb Brazy made the mistake of getting violent with D.D.'s family member uh, in Mobile. Now the Mobile police have called Darren Southall a person of interest in the deaths of Tony and Leela Lewis, Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents. According to law enforcement authorities, someone, Hitman, uh, I guess, fired into their home and, uh, and, and, and the house caught on fire and burned down after that. Now Honeycomb's real name is Nashon Jones. And according to court records, Nashon Jones fatally shot Dee Dee Southall's nephew in 2016. A report called the case murder, but a grand jury declined to indict Jones on the charge. He pled guilty instead to a gun violation. Now remember, he pled guilty on it. Uh, they found it to be... So it was considered like a self-defense. Now remember the DD was fresh out of the feds at this point, and according to his recent RICO conviction, he was starting to flood the streets of Mobile and, and elsewhere with Yayo. Now Honeycomb Brazy made this IG post referencing DD having bricks on his head and being the biggest rat in the city. So Honeycomb Brazy shot someone whose family member had the money and power to get more than an eye for an eye, and a two for two if he got two for one. Now, almost exactly a year ago, around Valentine's Day 2021, Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents' house got uh, shot up, set on fire, took both of their lives. Brazy, Brazy had just been in another shootout that I was posting on Facebook or Instagram Live and then got his probation violated. He was sent back to finish his 15-year prison term, though I'd imagine he'd be up for parole much sooner. A few months back, around Thanksgiving, Honeycomb Brazy posted a photo with text featuring this horrendous account of mistreatment at Limestone Correctional Facility where he's serving his sentence for being a felon in possession of a firearm. This shit Brazy, uh, he, I took all I can take. Uh, I'd rather die than live like this for real. Hashtag long live George Floyd. He continued to describe his experience thus far in the lengthy post alleging racism is to blame for his court cases. Quote, I'm at Limestone Correctional Facility. I've been here nine days and they shook me down five times already. 
this is a racist camp and the police have been calling me out my name and calling me all types of n-words i'm in lockup right now with no disciplinary write-up or no explanation i'm sure he caused a commotion because he is a celebrity he also detailed a disturbing occurrence involving correctional officers explaining how they woke him up early in the morning and proceeded to abuse him quote i ain't really complaining about my situation but I do want to bring awareness to my family and friends on what's going on. They woke me up at 2 a.m. this morning and strip searched me and threw me in lockup cell with no mat, blanket, or nothing and had me sleep on the floor. I said that to let everybody know I'm not going to keep going for this. Quote, I've been laid back trying to make it home to my family and see the bigger picture, but I still got my grandma and grandpa and all type of other stuff on my mind. I ain't gonna keep going for this no more. They probably gonna run in here when they see this post and jump on me. They might kill me or I might make it out. I ain't going for it no more, so I'm just letting everybody know. Now, just a few days before uh, that letter from Brazy uh, letting the world know about his conditions in Limestone, which is actually considered one of the most horrible prisons in America, his nemesis, Darren Deedee Southall, took a plea deal in federal court. Darren Jamark Southall, 43, pled guilty to conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine, possession with intent to distribute cocaine, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. Under the plea deal, he faces 35 years in prison, but that could be cut to 30 years, the statutory minimum, if prosecutors determine he has cooperated with law enforcement investigators working on this and other cases. It doesn't say he did, but now snitching to turn 35 into 30 doesn't seem like much of a deal, but the way they write things up in newspapers, you know... Who knows what the truth is. Now, quick detail about Dee Dee Southall's criminal powers. When he was initially indicted and taken into custody down at the county jail, he actually briefly escaped. Clark County Sheriff Ray Norris told the, the local Fox News outlet that Southall took advantage of a shift change and slipped away just before 6 p.m. We had a corrections officer take his eyes off him when he was taking him out to take the trash, he said. It was 100% our fault and 100% human error. Now, the sheriff said Dee Dee made it to a wooded area near the jail and then out an open door. But he said law enforcement authorities apprehended him a few hours later with the help of a helicopter and the new bloodhounds from the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency. Now, this is what the official story was at first, but later on in court proceedings, Dee Dee told investigators that he actually bribed a jail worker for his chance at escape. I would imagine he had transportation set to meet him at a pickup spot, but he didn't get there. And who knows, he might have been headed to Mexico to be with his partners in crime down there. If this sounds far-fetched, remember that Memphis kingpin Craig Petty's, not to mention the Forest Twins of Chicago, fled America when indicted and hid in Mexico for years while still directing traffic and collecting cash in the United States. But not Dee Dee. He got caught before he could get out of Alabama. In addition to his drug trafficking conviction, Dee Dee is known to authorities to be a person of interest in the situation with Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents. Not a lot of details about why they think that. And as for his guilty plea, he admitted to running a drug distribution network to supply dealers across the old Gulf Coast. Court records indicate that investigators had been on the South Hall since at least 2016, not long after he got out of prison. They got a court order to begin monitoring his calls in November of 2020. They also tapped other phones uh, through February of 2021, the same month Honeycomb's grandparents fell victim. And those conversations, according to Southall's plea agreement, showed him talking to couriers and led to busts resulting in the seizure of 12 kilos of coke, half a million cash and a gun. But the real story is, uh, that was the tip of the iceberg, and according to the plea document, this conspiracy that ran 4,000 kilos he sold, at least, and he admitted to 24 keys of H, 2 grams of fentanyl, who, who knows what else he sold. Uh, he made $24 million in drug proceeds in those couple years. 
And uh, he turned over millions in jewelry, two and a half million in cash, and 18 uh, cars that the Fed seized. It's a great day uh, in, in the city of Mobile to be able to have someone of this magnitude taking off the streets and taking out of the drug trade. Darren Southall will be off the streets after entering a plea deal. He faces anywhere from 30 to 35 years behind bars for his crimes. Now, the plea agreement had been worked out several weeks you know, prior to him taking it, but the defendant rejected it at the time. And uh, after his guilty plea, it just left one guy probably going to go to trial. But by the end of that day, a guy named Brandy Thrash also announced uh, they would admit guilt. With significant uh, jail time associated with that plea means a, a lot to this community as a whole uh, for somebody like him to not, not be able to be. So, Honeycomb Brazy, I think the story with the murder that he was charged with was just some... Was it a girlfriend boyfriend thing or was it a robbery or some gang beef or something? But long story short, when Honeycomb was younger, something happened in an apartment. He ends up killing this kid. And, uh, you know, they don't indict him for murder. The grand jury, you know, is down south. You know, you can have a gun, all that stuff. They, they figure he was a self defense or there wasn't enough evidence to call it murder. So he beats dad, he gets the little probation or whatever for the gun charge, but boy, he killed the wrong person. Cause that, that kid's uncle was Darren Southall, who had, I don't know what respect he had, but he definitely had some money and some power. 4,000 kilos out of Mobile, Alabama. It's a lot of money that means you're dealing with some serious people from south of the border who we probably met in prison, but you know, this this the street life. I mean, Southall goes to prison sometime between 2012 and 2015. His he gets out, his nephew gets killed. The feds start hearing about him in 2016. So during this whole little four-year run, they know about him. And then the fact that the taps on his phone stop the month that Brazy's grandparents got what happened to them. Maybe this is one of those instances where the feds were here. Like, they'll, they'll know crimes are going on, obviously, like drug dealing, and let them happen so they can document them and use them against your court. I mean, I get that. I understand that, I guess. But, you know, of course, they're not supposed to let a murder happen. For example, you know, in different mob cases, and you can see them on interviews, or I know about people where, you know, they got to go, the, the FBI agent is, is signed to some big mobster, he's got to go to him and be like, hey, John Gotti, we got word to so and so is going to get a hit out of you. Because they, by law, Darren Southall told a supplier in Texas that he sold 100 kilos of Coke every month, like clockwork. That's what he admitted to an agreement. So he's probably turning over three million every month, sending it up the road. That's almost like BMF. And they recorded thousands of phone calls where Southall arranged for the purchase and distribution of coke and heroin. Plea agreement details several examples of specific calls. And Darren Southall does not currently appear in the Federal Bureau of Prisons prisoner database. Now he only took his plea deal in November, so it's not strange that he doesn't have a sentence, but he should be in custody at least. I've looked up many people in the federal database over the years, and usually it'll say like in transit or something while you're waiting to get sentenced. He should be in custody though. Or maybe he's entered witness segregation, or it's possible there's some other explanation, but I doubt it. I did find a record of a man with his name convicted in southern Alabama, exactly where Mobile is, and released back from the feds in 2015. I mean, that's him. That's when his major ring started in 2016. So that's him. So they already have him in the system. Why they wouldn't have him uh, uh, listed as being in custody, pled guilty to 4,000 kilos and some fatty whopped H. He's definitely in their custody. He's not out on bond awaiting sentencing. So it should say he's in transit or something unless he's working out a deal. I wonder if the feds heard anything about Dee Dee's, uh, you know, planning to get the grandparents. Uh, 
a word on that. I don't think there's ever been any arrests in that, but uh, yeah, Honeycomb Brazy's doing a lengthy prison term under awful conditions. Those southern prisons, Limestone, Perchman in Mississippi, uh, where Cavario's working at in um, South Carolina, Lee, Lee Prison. But I mean, really, like, awful, awful conditions. So, you see, it, you see these guys in the... And the rap videos making being real street guys and you know tough guys whatever fun, but they pay for it with a lot of with a, with a lot of hard times. There's no rules in the dirty game. I mean the fact that the grandparents took the weight for what went on between Nation Jones, aka Honeycomb Brazy, and South Aw South Aw's nephew allegedly years prior will show you that. When you're dealing with the real serious people, there's no rules to the game. Nothing's off the board. Anything goes. Always know. Three others already in custody and charged in those murders tonight. Well, one of the men that's charged now with this murder is Darren Southall, who was sentenced today to 35 years in prison. The saga of Honeycomb Brazy and Dee Southall is a glimpse into various very serious street guys, one of whom, Honeycomb Brazy, of course, was next up. Uh, you know, an up-and-coming rapper from a spot on the map, Mobile, Alabama, that hasn't had much shine. After my first story on uh, the situation, some viewers, the guy named Young Scooter, uh, someone pointed out that the guy named Young Scooter had a, a video up from of, of D.D. Southall. Someone had captured him on Instagram and put it up a few years ago, and... Uh, it's pretty wild. Well, I ain't on the police shit no more. I ain't got nobody to roll on. I got to sit in a chokehold. <laughs> I'm walking like I'm talking to you, feel me? That's gonna walk it like you're talking to you, feel me? I ain't on the police shit no more. I ain't got nobody to roll on. I got to sit in a chokehold. <laughs> Catch what he said. He said, I ain't on that police shit no more. I ain't got nobody left to roll on. I got the city in a chokehold. So he's out hanging out with his buddy and says, someone says something about, are you, I guess, are you still snitching? Remember, Honeycomb Brazy famously put up an Instagram post that said, I got the biggest snitch in the city putting bricks on my head, referring to Dee Dee, we now know. And there's Dee Dee himself saying, I don't have anybody left to snitch on because I snitched on everybody and now I'm the biggest guy in Mobile and in that whole region and he, and, and he was. He gotten rid of his competition through snitching. Actually a common tactic at the highest levels of the dope underworld and now he had Mobile's business all to himself which as he pled guilty uh, to a federal court you know was a huge business. And Dee Dee Southall was await awaiting sentencing when I did the first story, but I think right on the same day he got charged with the double homicide, he got hit with 35 years in federal prison for running a huge uh, drug conspiracy, which included 4,000 kilos of coke, I think like 23 bricks of H, some bricks of Fent, um, out of Mobile. And uh, just to recap on his new charges, Tony and Leela Lewis lost their lives inside their own home in Mobile, Alabama's Happy Hill community when gunmen fired repeatedly into the building. One account I read said somebody went in the house and actually shot the grandfather and then maybe a um, one of them might have been on oxygen or something and the oxygen tank exploded and caused the house to go up. So Southall is not just charged with conspiracy he's charged with the murder and so the prosecutors say Southall and the guy named Terrence Sanchez Watkins and Jamarcus Devante Chambers and a fourth guy who's not been identified did the hit and it seems like Dee Dee and you might assume Dee Dee paid the other guys but all four men are also charged with shooting into an occupied building which sounds like Dee Dee was there himself so it was a real, real serious grind ball. I mean, he was, he was a, a kingpin. He was snitching, and he didn't just hire people to get killed. He went and would do the dirty work himself. Supposedly, the source of this blood feud was back in uh, 20, 
when he's 16 or 17, when Honeycomb Brazy, whose real name is Nation Jones, had an um, argument, some ongoing beef with another young guy over a woman, and the other guy shows up at her apartment, he, Honeycomb ends up killing him, and that was Dee Dee Southall's nephew. Now, while that sounds like a crime, the grand jury declined to uh, indict Honeycomb Brazy. I guess things are truly are, uh, the gun laws truly are loose down there in the South. Uh, the way that that thing's written up, it's hard to, surprising that he didn't get charged with anything but a gun possession. And he was put on like a probation with a fifth, or a short prison term with a 15 year tail. And of course, Honeycomb Brazy has been back in jail for a while. I read some um, things he said about his conditions at Limestone Prison there in Alabama where he's at. And he's finishing up his 15 year sentence. He violated his probation in a variety of ways from that case. And uh, now his arch rival, Dee Dee Southall, has been charged with killing his grandparents. Now the chief of police of Mobile, Alabama is uh, obviously happy to be rid of his own personal Al Capone in the form of uh, Darren Southall, he had this to say. We're grateful for the district attorney's office to be able to, at this point, make and approve charges in light of the Mobile Police Department's hard work and investigation to hold those responsible for this double murder under the law. Like I said, I just posted part one last week and Dee Dee was awaiting sentencing at that point. And, you know, as always, I, I put out the idea that who knows, maybe they're trying to work please so we can tell on people and get less time or something, but he got the full boat. He got 35 years and he got new charges. But what about this snitching that Dee Dee himself implies he was, he was doing? So he went to prison back in the early 2000s on a drug case and uh, obviously that would have been the time when he um, did some telling of his own and uh, let's let's go back to, to Dee Dee in his own words. I ain't on the police shit no more. I ain't got nobody to roll on. I got to sit in a chokehold. I ain't got to sit in a chokehold. I ain't walking like I'm talking to you, feel me? I ain't on the police shit no more. I ain't got nobody to roll on. I got to sit in a chokehold. I Right there, Dee Dee Southall sounds like a man with a plan that worked. And to quote the federal prosecutor, a guy named Sean Costello, who I'll talk about more in a second, he had the biggest operation, the largest amount of drugs, tremendous amounts of cash. He had a sophisticated operation. He was the largest scale drug dealer we've had operate in this area in quite some time. Oh, I forgot one more charge Dee Dee had to plead guilty to, or he got sentenced for, I'm sorry, on Friday, was the escape charge he caught when he walked away from the county jail when he first got indicted and taken into custody. And Dee Dee claims he had inside help, which it sounds like he did, but I don't know what became of that part of it, that would be pretty embarrassing for the sheriff's office. Dee Dee had served time back in 03 uh, after pleading guilty in a drug conspiracy charge. Maybe that's when he started telling he was involved in 2015 in the shooting. Something that's eerily reminiscent to the one Honeycomb Brazy uh, did when he killed his nephew. Uh, he was in a restaurant with a woman and a guy came in and started assaulting him and he chased the guy outside and shot him. He didn't kill him. And the grand jury declined to indict in that case. So whatever county those guys are in down in Alabama, I mean, they're, they're letting people uh, do some serious gunplay. I mean, they didn't charge him with anything for that. Now listen to this statement from U.S. Attorney Sean Costello. We had to use techniques that we don't use very often in order to investigate and hold him accountable because of how sophisticated and how complete his drug operation was. His financing operation, the way he moved the money, the laundering operation, all of it. It took a tremendous amount of work by a bunch of law enforcement agencies. Now, when he says they had to use unique techniques or techniques they don't normally use, did that include knowing that Dee Dee Southall was building himself up to this kingpin status all the while he was supplying information to knock off Mobile's other top dealers. He was giving them up to the feds because who's in a better position 
to know who's making moves in the street than the big drug dealers because they know who, if you're the guy bringing in 100 keys a month, which DD uh, told the Texas supplier on his one of his wiretap calls that he was he was getting 100 a month and paying $3 million a month for it every month for a couple years. Uh, he knows the guys that are buying the five and 10 packs. So he knows who's doing what and he can he can provide all the information, get rid of his rivals. And U.S. Attorney Sean Costello, I, I, don't, I don't think this would have been the guy who was getting Dee Dee's snitching information. U.S. attorneys change every so often. But Costello said, quote, he was putting poison all over, not just uh, the streets of Mobile, but the entire Gulf Coast. Between years and years and years of powder cocaine, crack cocaine, heroin and fentanyl, there's just no telling how much damage he did. And uh, he's right about that. But all the while Dee Dee was doing that, was he giving up people? Did they know what he was doing? I would say yes, I've read about a lot of these cases. I just did another story about a guy up in Detroit, Kenyell Brown, who went on a six person killing rampage before being killed by the, or killing himself as the police closed in and Kenyell, uh, he wasn't a drug kingpin, but he was robbing drug dealers and maybe working as a hitman and the police kept getting him out of trouble. He's a guy who should have been in prison, but he was very useful out on the streets. Maybe the same thing for Dee Dee. You know, do you let a guy build himself up to be the biggest dealer in town on the backs of putting other people away? Well, what's the point of that? And uh, of course, if you leave them out on the street too long, which it sounds like they happened with Dee Dee because the wiretaps of Southall's organization stopped right in the same month, February of last year, of when Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents were killed. Um, could they have indicted them sooner and got them off the street? Did the feds know the hit was coming? Uh, you know, we'll never know that. Is Dee Dee Southall a predatory bad guy bringing in huge loads from another country to distribute? Sure, you want to put him in prison forever? I don't care, but um, if, if in the course of that at different times you protect him and leave him on the street uh, because he's knocking off other people and then you realize, oh, well, he's the biggest fish, let's go after him. But how many people besides Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents did he kill or have killed during his rise to power? I mean, certainly possible that due to negligence by the U.S. attorney down there in Alabama, Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents might have fallen victim to the U.S. prosecutor's tactic of leaving this guy, Dee Dee Southall, out to, I guess, incriminate himself more or maybe incriminate others. And he left him out too long, maybe. And it, uh, he was able to commit one last very serious crime, the murder of the Lewises. So, rest in peace to the Lewises. Dee Dee Southall is out of here for a long time. Al Prophet, American Dope.